A common way to start the technical questions is by the interviewer asking you what the most common valuation methods are. At this stage, you should distinguish between intrinsic and relative methods. While the former is based on valuing the cash flows that the company will generate in the future, in relative valuation, the objective is to value a company based on how similar assets are being priced or have been priced in the past. We'll make detailed videos on each, but just for a short overview, the DCF is about the present value of future cash flows available to the enterprise stakeholders, while the trading comparables are about the market's perception of a company's value relative to a group of peers that are publicly traded, and the present transactions is about the value based on past transaction prices paid for similar businesses relative to their financials at the time. The LBO is really more an ability to pay analysis than a, than a valuation method as such, because it's about the maximum price that a financial sponsor, so a private equity company, is able to pay based on the equity hurdle rate and the ability to apply leverage. So after this, you're very likely to be asked a follow-up question, namely, which of the methods yields the highest value? The safe answer here is to say that the present transactions yield the highest value. This is because of the control premium. The control premium is a price paid by the acquirer over and above the market price of the target. It reflects the synergy potential of the target company for the acquirer and the necessary incentive for the seller to lose control of its business. The DCF is the second highest value due to bullish management assumptions and trading comparables would be third highest because they value a minority stake. The LBO, which is also called the flow value, is really the lowest value normally because the private equity companies can't pay, can't pay a synergy. Um, so this is really the lowest value you're going to get. However, some interviewers have the opinion that the DCF should be the highest value. And if your interviewer says this, just don't insist on it. Because 9 times out of 10, they'll want present transactions to be the highest. But some think that because of really bullish assumptions, the DCF can actually come out on top. This sort of brings us to the pros and cons, which is that the DCF is really dependent on the inputs. While it is theoretically the most correct because it's derived from academia, um, depending on what you input, you can get really ridiculous numbers. The trading comparables are good because they're based on public data that's readily available. And if you're quick, you can do a public comp analysis in less than 30 minutes. On the other hand, it doesn't include control premiums and the stock market may be irrational for some time. Um, for instance, if you think about valuing a company in the early 2000s before the dot-com boom burst versus after the dot-com boom burst, um, you would get really diff different values for the same company. The present transactions include control premiums and it reflects the actual prices paid by acquirers in the past. However, again, the premium depends a lot on the context and the market cycle. So the main disadvantage for the relative valuation methods is that no two company or transactions are truly identical. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments and if you've got any topics you'd like us to address. Um, and thank you for watching.